Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's such an honor, such a joy to be in God's presence this evening. And uh, it's an amazing time of worship. I was uh, really not sure what to preach this evening uh, because uh, I, I had too many thoughts in my mind and I was wondering what the Holy Spirit would uh, uh, confirm to me this evening to preach to you. And... Uh, I was uh, attending the Hindi service as well uh, before the English service started that time. The Holy Spirit inspired me uh, the, about what I should uh, speak to the church this evening. And uh, again, as the worship team was uh, uh, leading the worship, uh, the first song that they sang, uh, they, that they sang was, God is for us. Amen. Uh, that is what uh, I want to speak or that is what the Holy Spirit is inspiring me to speak this evening. S can you say that with me? God is for us. God is for us. Amen. Uh, this, uh, this season, yes, the season of a pandemic and uh, uh, lockdown and everything, uh, what God has taught me is this important thing. And uh, now when I preach or minister, I try to practice it uh, uh, as much as possible we have great authority in our in our mouth the bible says death and life are there in a man's tongue in his mouth we declare and it happens and in 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 this in this season uh, god has enabled us as a church and as individuals to declare things and uh, witness it firsthand come to life First hand uh, come into his fullfillness. Things that were not there before, uh, things that had uh, nothing to do with it before we declared it, happened uh, the moment we declared it with faith. So uh, as we are the children of God, we have got great authority in us and we speak and heaven will act upon it. Amen. So heaven will definitely act upon the things that we speak and declare uh, with faith. So let's take a moment and declare it this evening that God is for us. God is for us. Look to different circumstances that you're facing. Look to the different and difficult situations of your life and, and declare it this evening. God is for me. God is for me. Amen. Let's uh, quickly run in the word of God. I'm looking at uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 this evening. The verse says like this. What then are we now to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Amen. I'm going to read that verse one more time because I'm in love with this verse. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? This verse is a word of hope. It, it, it is a word of reality. Sometimes when people give us hope, they take the reality of things away from us. But this verse, I like it very much because it gives us two pictures. What, the first picture is that. The first picture says that there are certain things that's against us. Number one, there are certain things that's against us. There are certain things that's fighting us. The Bible does not tell us that you don't have a battle to fight. The Bible tells us or Bible clearly states that we have a battle to fight. And there are things that are against us. But the Bible asks the second question. If God is for us, who can be against us? That is a question. Bible says there is something that's against you. But there is something that is greater that is for you. Uh, God can defeat anything. God can defeat anything. Nobody doubts that. God is so powerful. He is the uh, most powerful uh, God in the entire universe. And he is the only God. He is there and he can defeat anything. Why does he make us go through all of this? The, the only reason that I could find from the Bible is that he wants us to know what victory is. Come on, I'll, I'll say that again one more time. God wants us to know what victory is. 
otherwise god could have done the battle all by himself he could have been victorious he is victorious his part is over jesus is victorious he is he is risen and he has authority over all hell and heaven and all the universe is under him he is victorious he is almighty god he don't have anything to prove to anybody but still he says that i am going to win this battle against the force of death and sin and the devil using my children because i want them to know what victory is right okay listen to me very closely uh, we as i'm i'm a parent so now i'm qualified to say this we as parents uh, we would uh, ask our children to study well right uh we have people who have uh like assets and bank balance like worth in millions they don't want their children to earn money and uh, uh, get something for themselves these children can live on the money that their parents have made for the next generation we we say in our uh, local 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 language that they have made money enough for four generations nobody needs to do anything but still as parents we would ask our children to study we'll we'll ask our children to get good marks we'll ask our children to start a good business or uh, or, or or get a good job because we know what is the benefit of having a good job is all this money came from the good job that we got because we studied and we passed all this money came in because we had the the education and the qualification and the information to run a good business that is why all this money came here so we want our we know what it is or what are the benefits of having a a, a good education is so even though we don't want our children to work and earn money we have enough money in our banks we will still encourage them because we know what it is to be victorious we know what how we felt when we scored that first rank in our uh, in our whole school or in the in the in the in the, in the, in the university or in the campus where you were studying you were the first rank holder and you know how it felt so you will encourage your children because you want them to experience that same joy and happiness that is why god is asking us to go through this fight so that we can enjoy what was victory what is the ultimate victory the ultimate victory happened on the cross of calvary where jesus defeated satan and its power and death and its ultimate power and jesus want us god wants us to experience the same victory in our spirit and in our flesh that is why jesus says there is battles in this world but do not be afraid i am with you till the end of the days so just because the father wants us to experience what victory is many a times he allows us to go through battles so let me quickly go uh, deeper into this word here this word says if god is for us who can be against us or in some translation what can be against us so there are certain people there are certain things that could be or that could potentially be against us what are what are those things that are against us that is what i want to speak and and if time allows how god turns all of that in our favor or how all of that turns out or works out in our favor because god is for us that is what what the holy spirit has put in my mind so let's go to verse number uh, number 2 here it says that we 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 were under condemnation by the law of sin and death okay here it says romans chapter 8 verse 1 says we were under condemnation by the law of sin and death what is condemnation we are destined to end up in hell we are destined to have an eternal death according to the law of sin and death so what was ruling us was this was this law of death that said that every man is born sinner every man who descends from adam has that sin in his dna so he is he is condemned to eternal hell there is no escape of it no matter how much you try no matter how much you go to the temple no matter how much you go to the synagogue or how much you sacrifice still you are condemned for eternal loss and damage 
marriage, that is what the law of sin and death states. And Jesus says, this law is standing there, vouching for our death, both spiritual and physical. And, and Jesus says, here God is saying, what Jesus did was, or what God did was, Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Here on one side, what is against us? The law of sin and death that demands that we should be punished. We should be condemned. We should be put to death. This is what the law of sin and death says. You know, this, the problem with the, the, the other law is that Jesus was the son of God. The eternal God. They, they, they trialed Jesus in three different courts five times and they couldn't find one single mistake in this man. But still, they used the law to hang him on a cross and nail him to death. You understand me? Jesus was blameless. But these people, these Pharisees and the Sadducees, they took the law in their hand twisted it and said this man is doing blasphemy hang him to death kill him because this this law this law of the old covenant it had the power of death in him it had the power to kill it had the power to kill a blameless man the blameless and the spotless lamb of god the blameless man who ever walked on the face of earth was put as put to death as a blameless lamb of god using the same law you know, I'm not against the Old Testament. Don't get me wrong here. It was not the problem of the law. There was the, the people who handled the law could actually twist it. It had the power of death in it. So they actually used the power of death and they used to corrupt every system. And the system was getting really corrupt. So God said, this system is not working out. Now this system is only capable to kill. It, is not, it was supposed to give life. You know, it was supposed to give life. It was supposed to channelize the life of God into the entire universe. But what it did was, it actually corrupted the system and it, and it cut the flow of life from God and it, it became the advocate of death. And God said, enough with this law that kills and condemns and put people to death. I am going to send my son to this earth and I'm going to stand on the side of human beings. I'm not going to stand on the side of the law. I am going to stand Stand on the side of the condemned human being and say that I am going to set you free through the sacrifice of my son from the power of this law, from the power of sin and from the power of death. Receive your freedom right now in the name of Jesus. I don't know. After last Sunday, the Holy Spirit has been ministering to me in this same, same topic, the spirit of freedom. God wants to set us free. God wants us to enjoy the freedom of God. So here, this, here we see the law of death and the law of sin, which, which says that you should be put to death. And, and Jesus said, I am going to stand on the side of the man, the condemned man, and going to set him free. Let me move further. And, and God said, I'm going to send my son and he will free the condemned people from the power of, of sin. And how he did, he condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in flesh like ours under sin's domain. Look at this verse very carefully. In my Bible, I've underlined this part. God sent his son in our likeliness, just like you and me. Just like you and me. He sent his only begotten son in our likeliness. He had hair like, maybe more hair than me, but hair like Benjamin. He had hands and legs and eyes and ears and feelings. And he, he was even hungry, just like me. He, he was in my likeliness. And God said, I am going to send my son into the domain of sin. Oh, that verse really encouraged me. God said, Listen to me very closely. God said, I am going to, see, uh, you know, I, I want to quickly quote the example of Moses. Moses ran away from the, from the land of Egypt. 
because he couldn't stay there anymore because the the enemy was too powerful there and god didn't and he went to, he went went to his father in law in midian god didn't uh, god didn't bring the pharaoh to the desert and uh, and made moses victorious there or ma- made the pharaoh fight moses in the wilderness where moses was god actually sent moses into egypt into the domain of the pharaoh and defeated him in the middle of the red sea where his greatest power source was the same thing god did when he sent jesus the power of death was sin and god decided that i am going to send my son into the domain of the sin and i am going to defeat sin in its own domain or am i shadala rabasikadara god said i am going to defeat the power of sin and the law in its stronghold i am going to break down its stronghold let me tell you in the spirit of prophecy this evening god is going to break down some strongholds in its power source right now in the name of Jesus oh my god this is so powerful god said i am going to send my son into sin's domain and i'm going to defeat it where it is this is very crazy you know jesus came into this earth i i've, I've heard many people preach this but i think it is very relevant and relevant enough to repeat this jesus came into this earth and the first recorded miracle the first recorded miracle jesus would have done many things but the first recorded miracle is jesus made wine out of water at cana during the wedding ceremony you know a family was facing humiliation if if that if that day if the wine did run out then it is a shame it is an insult to the groom and his family whom the bride's family has invited so they will break that relationship there that marriage will no longer happen a family will break before it starts to exist as a family you know i i i i am so excited when i preach this the devil started its operations in the garden of eden by dividing a family the other day when i preached here i said when when god came down in that in that garden in that evening and asked adam where are you he said the woman you gave me betrayed me so the first fight broke out the first family conflict the first division happened as a result of the work of the devil in the garden of eden so the devil started its operations by splitting a family by causing division and dysfunction in a family and god said i am going to beat the devil in his own domain i am going to come down i am going to unite a marriage which devil is trying to separate let me prophesy this evening god is telling me to tell somebody god is breaking certain strongholds right now families come back to the god's purpose in the name of jesus right now shatara bala bara ba shatala rabauti anthala i don't know but god is telling me certain families are so right now the spirit of division the spirit of dysfunctionality break right now loose your people right now in the name of jesus shatana rabala handa rabana sikara di anthala oh ribiri khadana rabashia thank you jesus thank you jesus listen to me very closely this is what the bible excites me about god doesn't do things a simple way he likes to do it the hard way it is hard for us but it is easy for him. if you have the power to beat the giant why would you go from behind and beat him if you have the power to strike the giant down face to face why would you take the shortcut you would rather go and beat him down this is what god does he is powerful enough to beat the giant so he does go out into the battlefield says strikes down the giant and says i am victorious come on come on tell me tell t- oh somebody say with me this evening i am going to slay the giant because god is for me come on come on i cannot hear you say god is for me god is for me i am going to beat the giant i am going to beat the giant i am going to beat the giant
mind. Because God is for me. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I like this. Here comes, now we were dealing with the surface only. Till this time. Time is running out. Amen. We, we deal with the surface, two things in the surface. But verse 6, Pastor Gio, verse 6 is very powerful. Romans chapter 8, verse 6. This is one of the greatest things that was against us. Remember our, our key was, if God is for us, who or what can be against us? Something that was really against us, something was, that was really fighting us, something that was uh, stopping our progress is mentioned in the verse 6. And it reads like this, for the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Oh, oh that is powerful. Nothing, nothing that you're doing is mentioned there. Like we, like the Holy Spirit ministered last time. What you think matters. The mindset of the, of the flesh is death. My God. Does the Bible say the work of the flesh is death? Yes, it does. But here it clearly mentions what makes you do. The work of the flesh is the mindset of the flesh. Come on somebody, realize that this evening there are two mindsets. If you don't believe me, you should open your Bible. Look in Romans chapter 8 verse 6 where the Bible clearly says, For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the flesh, or but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Come on, I, I want somebody to cross over. Yes. From the mindset of the flesh to the mindset of the spirit this evening. I want somebody to cross over from death to life. Change your mindset and you're over it. Amen. Many of us don't know this. Even I didn't know till the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. Many of us live in the mindset of the flesh. Let me tell you one practical example. This is from the book Yongi Cho. Pastor Yonggi Jo's book, Life and Doctrine. He, is, he was one of the greatest men of God ever lived on this planet earth. His church was at the point of time, the church with the biggest number of attendants. About 21 lakh people attended his Sunday services every morning. There used to be seven shifts where people used to come uh, in, in millions and attend the service. So this man of God, he wrote in his book, that the way that you think and you, the way that you think affects the way that you speak. And the way that you speak affects what happens in your life. This man of God is from, is from Korea. So he says, the Koreans always speaks about death. If, 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 uh, my, if I'm a Korean man and my wife makes a good curry, I would say that my God, this curry is so good. This food is so delicious. My, my stomach would split into two because I ate so much and I might die. Oh. And imagine my wife dresses up very, very nicely and she comes out of the bedroom. And I would look at her and I will tell her, you are so beautiful. I think my eyes are going to burst and I am going to die because you are looking so beautiful. I can't look at you. What? This man is complimenting his wife. Can you believe it? <laughs> if, if I compliment my wife like this, she would run away. Thinking that something is wrong with that. Amen. But this people, this is, I am not taking this from myself. This book says, he, he, he has written in his, his experience that this is how they compliment. The last two things had the, pro, uh, the prominent factor or the prominent thing in those two uh, conversations was death. But actually they are supposed to be compliments. One, this man is complimenting his wife for the good food that she made. The other one, he is complimenting her for the good looks that she's, ha she's, she's having. Both has death in it. So Pastor Yonggi just says, because they speak constantly of death. There were the people who were maximum... Uh, Affected by wars in the both world wars. Most number of people died uh, in Korea than in other third world nations. Than in Korea during the time of the first and second world war. Even now there is a lot of unrest and uh, 
uh, people dying and all of this happening in Korea because he says what they think influences what you speak. You know, uh, Pastor Yonggi Jo says that during the Second World War, uh, they, uh, the Korea, this, uh, this Korea, Korea was under uh, a colony of Germany and they used to kill people mercilessly without any reason. They feel like killing someone, they would just simply kill. This happened one day that uh, Pastor Paul Yonggicho, he didn't know an answer of, of a question. And the military schools were run by uh, uh, the German soldiers because he didn't know an answer. Uh, the, the German soldier beat him up very badly, threw him into his corner of a class. And then still this man was still mad at Yonggicho. What he did was he put Yonggicho, seven-year-old boy, into the middle of the class. And with his, uh, his boot-wearing legs, he stood on top of this small boy and stood there and he continued the lecture for an hour because of which this man of God developed tuberculosis later in his life. That was how people were ill-treated by the Germans. I don't have anything against Germans. This is what happened during that point of time. So Germans ill-treated Koreans during that point of time like this. And he said they were subjected to that kind of ill-treatment and torture and killing because they always talked about death and they always had this mindset where they thought that they will die sometime. So remember this very clearly. Put this in your mindset right now. There are two things of mindset that is fighting for a dominion over you. One is the mindset of the flesh and the other is the mindset of the spirit. Which one are you going to let dominion over you right now? That is the question that the Holy Spirit wants to ask us right now. Because we are going to decide which, which is going to have a dominion over us. And the Bible says, if you have the mindset of the flesh, it is death. But if you have the mindset of the spirit, it is life and peace. Okay, listen to this very carefully. Our, our, our body is still on this earth, right? Our body is still on this earth. How can we have the mindset of the spirit? Okay, we have the mindset of the spirit. Our spirit is saved, but still we are... Uh, on this earth, how, how will we save our, our flesh? The afflictions happens on our flesh, right? So how are we going to do, what are we going to do with that? We don't have to do anything with that. We just need to translate or transform ourselves or cross over ourselves into that mindset of the spirit. And verse 10 says, listen to me very carefully. Now if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life of, because of righteousness. Verse 11 says, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. Come on, what will happen if the spirit starts to move inside your life? Word of God says that your body might be under the influence of the flesh and the law of the flesh. But if you cross over into that mindset of the spirit, the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead would raise your mortal bodies. Oh, come on somebody. If you change your mindset, it is freedom and it is salvation and it is peace and, and, uh, and deliverance on your mortal bodies as well. God is asking someone to change their mindset right now. Because if your mindset changes, God says, then the spirit has a room to work. If your mindset changes, then the spirit of the Lord is having a room to work inside you and change you inside out. And therefore, if the spirit, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit that lives in you. So this is what